Now, obviously, the word in Arabic for second wife is darra, sometimes mispronounced durra, but it's actually a darra. Darra means harm, right? That's what it means. It means harm. So, obviously, I don't know if, if the first wife named the second wife darra or not, but it indicates that the Arabs understood something about the psychology of multiple marriages. And, and that the, the, the second wife will bring in a type of darra to the first wife. Uh, so that does happen. And, and you can get that vying for things. So that's uh, tahabbub. And then takabbur is arrogance. That causes envy. If you see somebody getting ahead of you and you're arrogant, you see, he doesn't deserve that. I'm better than him. He should not. That's takabbur. He shouldn't have got that promotion. And this is something that some of the Arabs uh, had uh, in, in uh, uh, like Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira, uh, Abu Jahal, uh, you know. They, they, they had that against the Prophet ﷺ. They thought themselves, he's Yatimu Bani Hashem. He's the orphan of Bani Hashem. He's Ibn Abi Kabsha. That's what they called him. Abi Kabsha is the, his uh, father by wet nursing. So, they just saw, he doesn't deserve this ni'ma of being spoken to from the heavens. We deserve it more than he does. So that's takabbur, which is, I think, pretty obvious. Ta'azuz is less so than takabbur. Ta'azuz has to do with a person wanting the status quo. In other words, he doesn't mind feeling the same as the other person. As long as we have the same things, it's okay. But suddenly you get the job promotion. And I didn't. And then my question is, I start saying, he's going to start looking down on me. Right? So the dynamic changes. So ta'azuz is I'm trying to maintain my izzah. So really it's related to a poor self-esteem. And I think that's how I translated it. Poor self-worth. Ta'azuz is an attempt to reestablish an equilibrium because you're feeling... Uh, that your self-worth is compromised by the fact that another person has more than you do. And so that's also a cause of hasad. And you can see that also in, uh, in the first uh, Muslims who when they, for instance, they said, لَوْ لَا نُزِّلَ هَذَا الْقَرَانَ عَلَىٰ رَجِلٍ Right? مِنْ الْقَرِيَتَيْنِ عَظِيمٍ Had this Qur'an only been revealed to a man from one of the two big cities who was great, a great man. In other words, if it would have been revealed to Walid ibn Mughira, we wouldn't mind bowing our heads to him and admitting that, you know, you're the prophet. And think, But this is Yatim bani Hashem. How can he be over us? In other words, we want him to stay the same as us. So this is, uh, this is something that, that, the, that happened, afflicted those first Arabs. And also those who said, this is just Hada Bashar. Mithalana, right? This is just a man like us. How can he be a prophet and, and we're not prophets? In other words, we don't like this idea of somebody who's a common man. If it's a king, that's all right. We can deal with that because the king's better than us. We know that. But he's, he's my next door neighbor. Right? How, he shouldn't have anything better than me. So it's, it's that idea there. And also, uh, you find that Fir'aun... Uh, says, actually that's more takabbur. But he says about uh, Musa, you know, that how can a prophet come and his people are our slaves, you know, looking down on them. So these are all reasons why people reject the truth. And ta'ajjub has to do with, you just can't believe it. It's more, you know, I can't believe. It's, it's not takabbur, it's not ta'azuz. It's, it's just type of, you know, this can't be happening. <laughs> right? This person couldn't have won the jackpot. and I've known him all my life. This can't be happening. So it's, it's a hasad that's really related to a type of disbelief. You know, in, in, in somebody getting a blessing that, uh, that you just can't believe that he has that blessing. doesn't make any sense. And then also, hubr uh, love of leadership, 
always wanting to maintain one's position of authority. Sometimes hubb al will lead a person to not want somebody to get a blessing just so they can maintain the position over them of authority, which is, is similar to takabbur, but different in a sense because he does have a position of leadership or he desires to have it over that person and by them getting some type of blessing, it's going to lead to uh, changing that equilibrium or creating a disequilibrium there. So, and then shuhun hati, shuh is, is covetousness. So that's also a cause of envy, just pure shuh. Like you see somebody has something, you just have a shahiyah, you're covetous of it, you want it. And that's uh, a big disease. Which Allah says, وَمَنْ يُوْقَ شُحَ نَفْسِي فَأُدَيْكُمْ مُنُفْلِحُونَ Those who are saved from their shuh. Now another thing, one of the concepts that Imam al-Ghazali mentions often is because these, these diseases in fact are part of our nature, the process is to transform them and make them a, uh, something beneficial to you. For instance, uh, Native Americans, some of the Native American tribes in this country used to name their children names that had disabilities, right? Like lame deer. They, they would give it a name that had a disability. And the reason for that was that they, they noticed that animals that had disabilities tended to overcompensate. And it would make them more clever than the other. They'd have to be more uh, aware. And so there's an idea of getting your disability to become an advantage. And this is what really successful people in dunyawi terms tend to do. And what Imam al-Ghazali is saying is, this is what the Ukhrawi people need to do with these disadvantageous uh, aspects of their selves, to turn them into advantages. So for instance, Hasad, the Prophet ﷺ said, لا حسد إلا في ثنتين. There's no envy except in two people, Rajulin. Uh, uh, he was given wealth right? He used his wealth for uh, good right? And uh, in a riwayah it says that he You know he's giving it out by night and by day So that's a good reason to envy that person Not that you want him to lose the envy uh, To lose the ni'mah But that you actually want to be like him To have wealth so that you can uh, also give out. And that is called in Arabic ghibta, which is different from hasad. Ghibta is good envy. It's a positive envy. You're envying the person. You don't want them to lose their ni'mah. You want them to keep their ni'mah. But you wish that you had what they had. And the other person is rajulin utiya hikmah. He was given hikmah, wisdom. So he teaches that wisdom to people, right? And so those two people, in other words, what we're being told is, don't envy people over petty, trivial things like dunya. It's not worth it. Envy people for things that are, are high things, like akhirah. And then what that will do is it will make you set out to, to achieve what they've achieved. Alright, so... And then he says uh, about asbabu lawati min hayati, those are the causes. And then he says, As for a blessing that a kafir has, uh, a non Muslim or a bad Muslim, fajr, somebody who's fajr, they have fujur, uh, a profligate, somebody who does kabair. A fajr is somebody who does kabair openly. As for a fajr, he says, فِيهَا يَجُوز مَرَضُ الضَّرَائِرِ The disease of second wives is permissible in this case. أَفَادُهُمْ مَيَّارَةُ إِبْنِ عَشِرِ I mean, he uses second wife because it works with the, the rhyme. And also I think it indicates that that's, you know, it's a natural type of hasad. You know, it's, 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 a, na- it's, a, it's a good thing to have hasad towards non-Muslims and, uh, and uh, but obviously that has to be because they're using it for bad things. Do you see the difference? In other words, what I was saying 
earlier about having envy towards non-Muslims just because they have dunya and you don't. That's not a good reason. The reason that he's saying it's a good thing to do is because they have dunya that they're using for harm. They're harming people with it and they're using it to oppress. And in that case, it's, it's justifiable, it's, it's, it's permissible. And he said, Sidi Mayara, who commented on Ibn Ashar, benefited us that. And then he says, Amr Hayaw, the Mimu Firmani Umin, Taghiri Munkarin, Awis Suari An, Amrin Minadini, Wanahwidarik, Poh Ladi Uddam and Maharik. Blameworthy modesty. Modesty is a good thing, it's virtuous. Al Hayao Min al Iman. The Hadith says, Al Hayao Min al Iman. Al Haya is from Iman. So this haya, which is called al haya ul dhameen, blameworthy. This is a, the blameworthy modesty is a modesty that prevents you from making inkar of of munkar when you see it. So you see somebody doing something wrong, and you really should say something, but you're too shy. Right? You're too shy. Like uh, a, a, a child, uh, 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 an adult child with the parents. There's a type of modesty because they're my parents, I can't say anything to them. A munkar is a munkar, whether it's the parents or anybody else. If it genuinely is a munkar. Now just to say a few things about munkar. There's a condition about munkar. One, a munkar has to be mujma alay in order to make inkar of it. It has to be agreed upon. You can't make munkar of something that's called muhtaraf fihi, which means there's difference of opinion about it. Um, so whenever there's difference of opinion, you have to be very careful about munkar. Because technically the munkar of one scholar might not be the munkar of another scholar. And unless it's absolutely agreed upon that it's a munkar, then uh, you, you, you can't make inkar of it. And they said about Imam al maziri he was so knowledgeable that he rarely made uh, inkar of anybody. Because he could always find a delil for, the, a proof for their actions somewhere. So, and that's a really important thing to know now, just because there's so much, Muslims make so much inkar of each other. There's this impulse now, just everybody attacks everybody else. So, blameworthy modesty is something where you don't make inkar where you should, or to ask a question about the deen. That's blameworthy modesty, and that's why Sayyidatu Aisha anha said uh, that the best women were the women of the Ansar because modesty did not prevent them from learning the deen. So she was praising them, saying that even though there's things uh, that people would be modest about, it didn't stop them. Like the Prophet Sallallahu who somebody came to him, a woman asking about uh, the period, and he was explaining to her, and she kept asking, and finally he just asked Aisha to show her what to do, because it was embarrassing for him. And, and Aisha could answer the question because she was faqiha. Um, but the point is, is that that woman wanted to know. And even some of the women, uh, they used to send in a, in a little box uh, the, the cloth from their period to ask the hukam from Aisha about the color. Right? I mean, that, that was like asking to make sure they understood when the hayyad ended and when it started. Right? So, I mean, that's obviously most women, you know, that's, they would not feel comfortable with that at all because they're modest about it. But the point is, they, those women were so bent on doing what Allah, or so straight about doing what Allah uh, told them to do, uh, that, uh, that, that their modesty didn't prevent them from doing those things. And that would tend to be more with women than with men, but it applies to both, because there are some men that are extremely modest, so they don't ask questions. 